Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today we've got something special. I was approached by a Facebook group called Crochet Along. And you know, this, I, I was rather taken aback because I've never been approached by a group to do a project before. But this Facebook group, they do a whole bunch of crochet alongs. And uh, this is just one piece of the Winter Jewelry Box set. And it is a cowl and a hat. And, you know, it, it's really quite cute. This is called a, a beaded cowl. And it's all part of a set. And this is just one of several tutorials that are going to be up. I'm going to be doing this one, as you can see. And it was really quite simple to make, actually. And the designer is Anna Piscors, and uh, they were kind enough to send me the pattern, and, uh, you know, I gave it a whirl. It's really quite simple, and I used, for this project, I used just over a skein. I used a little bit of, you know, the second skein of, do do do, Vanna's Choice, and for today's tutorial, wrong yarn, I'm going to be using, in this lovely green, I'm going to be using Dusty Green in Vanna's Choice, and I'm going to be using a size J 6mm crochet hook. Now, as far as the pattern is concerned, you know, um, they suggest using a, a bulky weight yarn, or, you know, a, a chunky weight of yarn, and as far as the hook size, it, suggested, it suggests an eye hook or a hook to obtain an acceptable gauge, as per usual. As far as the finished dimensions, it's approximately 29 and a half inches long and about 7 inches wide on the short side. And of course, you're going to need some buttons, approximately 1 inch in diameter. However, you can make the buttonholes bigger or smaller, so it's not necessarily a crucial factor, okay? And what Anna has to say about the pattern, do you sometimes feel like a luxury skein of yarn is too good to be used in just any project? That's exactly what I thought of this chunky wool yak down blend that she used. So and it ended up just sitting there in my stash, waiting for a brilliant idea. But almost a year later, when I dived into my stash and took it out, I knew I had to do something special with it. So I just started stitching, and the cowl was made. Usually, my designing process includes a lot of sketching, swatching, sampling, and frogging, but this one just came out smoothly. It's almost as if the design wanted to be made, and was guiding my hook. The cowl is an easy, quick project, which it actually is. You can make one of these in a day, no problem, I can vouch for that. Uh, yet it is subtle, sorry, yet it's subtle textured details put it over the top, adding an elegant touch to your winter wardrobe. And I do concur because these half double crochet beads or jewels, these I thought were so much fun to make. They're really quite simple. And then you have this really neat sort of ribbing look, okay? And, you know, you got your cute little buttonholes, you know, very, very simple to make. And uh, as far as the Facebook group Crochet Along and, you know, the, the blog and all the good stuff and the Ravelry information, I'm going to post all of that in the description box down below so that you'll be able to check it all out for yourselves. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, row one. So like I said, I'm using a size J six millimeter hook and my worsted weight yarn. Now for the first row, I mean, of course, we're starting with a slip knot as per usual. We're going to be using foundation single crochets. Now, following the pattern, it calls for a total of 88 foundation single crochets, or you can use, you know, any even number of stitches as long as you get your dimensions right. That's fine. 
So to do the foundation single crochet stitches, we're going to start by chaining up two. And then going into that first chain, pulling up a loop, pull a loop through, and then pull through both. And that's one done. Then just got to do this 87 more times in my case. So then going through the base stitch, I like to go through both loops, pull up a loop, pull a loop through, and then pull through both. And then going through the base yet again, pull up a loop, pull a loop up, pull through two. Going through the base again, pull up a loop, pull up a loop, pull through two. So I already have right now one, two, three, and four. Okay, this one right here counts as my first one right there. And it's got a little bit of height to it, and also you can sort of scooch that closed. So I've got four right now. And I'm going to keep crocheting along until I have a total of 88 of these foundation single crochets for my first row. And then when I have all of them ready, I will meet back up with you. Alrighty. All right, row two. So I already have all of my 88 foundation single crochet stitches made. Now for row two, which is actually my favorite row, I'm going to start by chaining up one and turning the work and into this first stitch we're going to do a half double crochet so it's yarning over and pulling through all three loops now this is where the fun starts the half double crochet bead stitch this is a lot of fun so going into the very next stitch I'm gonna make a half double crochet but it's not over there, no, just the beginning, because the bead stitch, we're going to be working around the post of the half double crochet. So yarning over and going around the post, pull up a loop. And we're going to do that a total of three times. So that's once, yarn over, go around the post, pull up a loop. That's twice, yarn over. Go around the post, pull up a loop. So you end up with a total of seven loops on your hook, and then pull through all seven loops. A little finagling, finagling and finessing sometimes, but you can totally do it. And that is the bead stitch. Now, to continue on for this row, going to skip the next stitch and then going into the one right after. So we went into this one, skip that next one, going into that next one with the exact same bead stitch. So yarning over, going into the stitch with a half double crochet, and we're going to do another bead stitch. So yarn over, go around the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, going around the post, pulling up a loop, yarning over, going around the post, pulling up a loop, and then pull through all seven stitches. And each of these beads counts as two stitches. And so at the very beginning, we have our, our half double crochet, this one right here, and we made two beads. So we've got two and four stitches accounted for. So then by the time you get to the end, if you did 88 foundation single crochets, you will end up with a total of 43 of these bead stitches and one half double crochet at either end. And so I'm going to keep on keeping on doing my bead stitches here, going into that, you know, skipping that stitch, going to the next with a half double crochet, yarning over, 
going around the post, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going around the post, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going around the post, pulling up a loop, and then pull through all seven loops. So I'm going to keep doing this for the rest of row two, making these beads, and then I will meet back up with you at the end of the row. Alrighty. All right, so I'm almost done with row two, just have one more to go, and then I'll show you how to end off row two. So I just did my bead, and skipping that one, going to the next with another bead. So half double crochet, three loops, five loops, and seven loops. Pull through all seven. Then to finish the row, again, skipping that single crochet, going into the last one with a half double. And voila. And so now I have, for the length of my piece, I have 43 of these bead stitches. I love them. They're so squishy. And I have a half double on either side. And uh, that is the end of row two. All right. Be right back with row three. Told you I'd be back. <laughs> row three. All right. So for row three, very, very, very simple. Going to start by chaining up one and turning the work. And then into every stitch, just going to do a half double crochet. Now, like I said, keep in mind that each of these bead stitches makes up two stitches up top. So you will end up with, you know, for my case, you know, 88 stitches by the end. So going into each stitch with a half double crochet stitch. So this bead stitch, there's one and then one right next to it. So just going into the top right there. And just do a half double crochet all the way across. Really quite a very simple row. And actually the next two rows for the repeat are just as simple. And we'll get into buttonholes and all that good stuff. But right now, it's just half double crochet all the way across into each stitch for the rest of row three. Alrighty. So I'll meet back up with you when I reach the end of the row, and uh, we will continue on with row four. Alrighty, row four. Alright, so for row three, it was all regular half double crochets. For row four, it is through the back loop. So again, to start row four, we're just going to chain up one and turn our work. And we're going to be working through the back loops. Now at the, the top of the stitches, you can see that you have two loops. We're going to work through that back one, the one facing away from us. So yarning over and going through the back loop like so, and then pulling through all three loops. Again, going through the back loop. And we're going to be doing a total of six half double crochets. We already got two, we got that initial one, then five more. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Now, determining, well, depending on the size of your buttons, that will determine how many chains you need to now do. My buttons are relatively small, so I only need to chain one, and then skipping one of these back loops going into the next one. 
Now in the instructions, it says to chain four and skipping four of these bottom stitches and then going into the next one. But since my buttons are relatively small, I only need to go through one. I'm gonna show you what I mean. All right, got my little button right here. And so you can scooch this through, no problem, all right? You know, so you're going to have to figure out how many chains you're gonna need in order for your button to be able to fit through the loop. Uh, not too easily, otherwise um, it, it won't hold in place when, you know, you wanna keep your, your cowl closed. All right, so me personally, for my buttons, I only need one. And then it's just a matter of doing back loop double crochets for the rest of row four. All the way across. Like so. And the thing about doing the back loop double, sorry, back loop half double crochets, I wanted to say doubles, um, is that it creates a neat little ridge almost looks like a knitted ridge. You know, if you turn it this way, almost looks knitted, rather pretty. And so I'm going to keep on keeping on for the rest of this row, just doing my back loop half double crochets, and then I will meet back up with you for row five. Okay. Alrighty, row five. So for row five, now in the last row, it was all in the back loop to create this ridge here. Now for row five, we're gonna start by chaining up one, turning the work, and now we're going to create a different kind of ridge. We're gonna be working through what is referred to as the third loop. So what we have here is we have our, our two loops. You know, if we turn the work, we have our two loops there, but Facing us, we have a loop right in front. That's where we're going to be working into for the entire row. This loop right down here. You know, this, this little horizontal bar right there is where we're going to be working into the third loop. So going in and doing half double crochets all the way across into that third loop right there. Now, not the front, not the back, the third. <laughs> and so we're going to be going all the way across. Now, the reason why we're going through the third loop is because by doing this on the other side, the, the right side of the piece that you see facing outward when you're wearing your cowl, I'm going to show you real quick. When you turn it around to the right side, we now have another set of ridges. Absolutely lovely. So I'm going to work my way across until I reach my buttonhole, and I'm going to show you what to do when you reach said buttonhole, and we will finish up our fifth round, row, not round, our fifth row, and... I will tell you about the repeats for this project. And so I'm going to do the rest of this row off camera. I'll meet you for the buttonhole and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with row five. I'm almost up to my buttonhole and I just have a few more stitches to go. Like so. And like so. All right, so now basically what you need to do is go through back loop, the loop facing you, that is, like so. Just do that one more time for you, like so. Create your half double. And so you do that for each of your chains because you don't want to throw your stitch count off. And then when you turn it around, you can see that it still has that raised 
chain look. All right. And then you just finish off your row through that third loop, just as we have been, until you reach the very end. And that is, in essence, the majority of this cowl project. Now I'm going to talk to you about the, the repeat involved. I just want to finish this up real quick. And then one more, one more little guy down here. Just go right in. And just got to get into that loop right there. Come in. There we go. Through the loop and shaboom. All right, so when you turn it over, as you can see, you have that really neat raised chain look and your buttonhole is snug right in between. Really quite cool. All right, so now as far as the repeat is concerned for the rest of your piece, you would repeat rows two through five two more times and then if your piece is wide enough you know then you would repeat rows two and three one more time okay so you want your piece to be approximately seven inches in width all right now let me show you what i got here and you need to keep in mind let's see so this is my full project. So what I did was I repeated rows uh, two through five two more times. So we've got two through five, two through five, and then rows two and three are at the very end. And also one more thing is that we are going to have a little bit of a, a border as well. So that will add on a little bit to the dimensions. So what I need you to do now is repeat rows two through five two more times and then repeat rows two and three one time and then I will show you how to do a border and how to adjust your buttons alrighty which is really quite simple and uh, so I will meet back up with you when I've done my repeats and then I will show you the finishing touches alrighty be back in a few. Hello again. Alrighty, so I had done quite a bit of stitching on my piece, and so we're going to continue on with the conclusion of how to make this absolutely stunning cowl, and we're going to start with the button placement. Now, because of the way that you wear the cowl, the buttons are on the same side as the facing side. All right, and they're gonna go in a cute little row right along the very middle in between your ribbing of the very middle of your piece. All right, now what I did, and I strongly suggest that you do the same. When you are doing the placement of your buttons, don't actually knot them and sew them in right away. No, no, no. What I would strongly suggest is to tie them to the back of your piece with a bow. That way, if you need to reposition them, you'll be able to do so. Just a little helpful hint, um, you know, that I really wanted to pass along because once you tie that knot, well, you're kind of stuck. As far as getting the yarn through the buttonholes, I would suggest using the point of your scissor to help sort of scooch it along. Now what I did was I placed my buttons about five stitches apart. So five stitches in between and five stitches in between. And what I did was I laid it out as such and I put the buttons through, hang on just a moment here. <laughs> there we go, I'm getting there. 
All right, so sort of like an awareness ribbon, if you will, the way that it sort of folds over like that. And so this is all, this is the same side as this. And so what I did was actually first I had the buttons lying on top of the buttonholes and I had the threads through the buttons going through the buttonholes and then I approximated where I was going to place them, okay? And then when I did that, just one more to go. <laughs> yeah, then after I approximated where I wanted them to be in relation to the top piece, I then threaded my yarn through a piece in between those two ridges. And then after I did that, I figured about five stitches roughly, you know, and that is how I came to position my buttons. Now we're going to do the border edge, which really is quite simple. And then we will be done. Alrighty. All right, so I secured my buttons into place and I got my ends sewn in already, very convenient. And now we're going to do the border edge. So continuing on where we left off with that last half double crochet, going to chain one and turn the work. And then this entire long edge, we're going to do slip stitches all the way across. And my personal recommendation is to go a little bit loose so that it doesn't bunch up on the sides. You know, that's just me and my own little personal thing. You know, I mean, a slip stitch is a slip stitch, but I have a tendency of doing these things rather tightly. So I try to make a conscious, conscience, conscious effort <laughs> to do it a little bit on the loose side so that it won't buckle on me. So I'm going to go all the way across the length of this side with just slip stitches. And then when we reach the corner, I'll show you how to do the short side. And then of course the other two sides are exactly the same because, well, it is a rectangle, and uh, so I will meet back up with you when I reach the corner, and uh, meet you there. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with my slip stitching for the long edge of the cowl. I just have to get into this last stitch right here with a slip stitch. And then, since we've reached the corner, we then need to turn our work 90 degrees. So then we can work along the short edge. So we're going to start by chaining up three, one, two, and three, and then it's going to count as our first double crochet. Now our next one is going to go underneath the post of this double, sorry, half double crochet. There we go. And in the post of this bead stitch, we need two double crochets. It's all about even placement of stitches so that the edge doesn't buckle or waver. And then over the next three rows that we did, we need five double crochets. And then when we reach a bead row, it's two over that bar. So going right in. So that's one. And two, and three, and I like to capture two loops. I don't like to go underneath one loop. I like to go under at least two, sometimes even three. But let's see if I can get underneath two loops here. There we go. So 
So we had our two, so I've got four, and then I just need one more. So I'm going to go in right here for my fifth double crochet. I'm just going to do a quick close-up to show you. All right, so this is my bead row right here. I've got my two doubles right there. And then I've got my next five over the next three rows. Then we've reached another bead row. So going underneath that bar right there. So that's one. And two for the bead row. And then I need five more before the next bead row. So that's one, two, three. And then, like I said, I like to go underneath two loops if possible. There we go. Four and one more. Five. So with this placement, it really does create a really nice, even distribution of stitches, which I really do like. And that is quite honestly one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of edging on my projects, because sometimes for me it's rather difficult to figure out, but this works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've reached another bead row. So again, two double crochets within the bead row. We need another five, so one, And two, and my stitching is a little bit tight, but that's par for the course for me. So that's three, and come on. I know I'm having issues, I'm sorry. And four, and five. And we've reached our bead row once again. So that's one, and two. And we're almost there, we're almost to the end, okay. Alrighty, so when you reach the end of the row, and after doing those two double crochets for the bead stitch, I'm going to do one double crochet underneath this first row that we did of the half double, and then chain three, and turn your work so that we can then work with our original foundation single crochets, okay? And doing that, going to do a slip stitch into each of the stitches for the foundation chains until we reach the other side. Sounds easy enough, right? All right, so I'm going to go right in. And because this is where my initial knot was and I already sewed it in, it's going to be a little bit tricky for me, but I will persevere. All right, and aha. And slip stitch and then just slip stitch into every stitch all the way across. And you want to be sure to get both loops. Of your original stitches. And so I'm going to do this all the way across until I reach the end of this side, and I'll be right back. 
Alrighty, so I'm almost done with my slip stitches, and then we have another short row. And so after you're done with your slip stitches, you would then chain three, one, two, and three, and then do a double crochet around that post right there. And we're turning our work 90 degrees once again. And we have the row of our bead stitch. So around that post, we're going to do two double crochets. So right into here. That's one. And two. And then we're going to work our way all the way across. So it's going to be five double crochets in between. So one and two and three. And four. And last but not least, five. And then, since we've reached our bead stitch once again, we need two more double crochets. One and two. And then we need five more in between here and here. So I try to evenly space them as best I can. That's one. And two. And three. Oops. I want to get two loops there. And four and five. All right. And I've reached the bead stitch once again. So one and two. And then I need another five more. And then my bead stitch. So we're, we're getting close. We're almost there. The home stretch. One. And two. And three. And four. And five. Okay, two more on the bead stitch row. All right, so then, <clears throat> excuse me, then when you reach the very end, I just have one more right in there, but that's where we started our our slip stitches. So, do, do, do let me just check my instructions here. Yep, just one more double crochet right into here. And then, last but not least, going to chain three and slip stitch to the very first stitch of the last round. Right into there. There we go. We're just going to slip stitch that. And then, if I can get in there, there we go. And slip stitch. Shaboom. Hee 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 hee. Oblah dee, oblah da. 
There we go. <laughs> and we are done. Yes. Obladi, oblada, life goes on. La, 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 la. All right. And so all you have to do is just cut off your end, sew in your ends, and you too can have a really spiffy cowl. Yes. Something nice and toasty woasty for these cold winter months. Yes. Oh, I'm so delighted. All right, we're all done. I sewed in my end and it is lovely. I am so excited. This pattern was a lot of fun to make. Very simple, very quick, and the textures are to die for. So again, I would like to very much thank the Facebook group Crochet Along and also the designer Anna Piscors for allowing me to do this tutorial and I really hope that you like it and also that you check out all the links down in the description box down below. And uh, you know if you enjoyed this and I certainly hope that you did please give me a little thumbs up button down below because as always I appreciate your appreciation and I do try to post videos as often as I can whether it's you know, crocheting or knitting or audiobook narration. And of course, as per usual, I have my video game channel, Fiber Spider Games, and I'll put a link to that in the description box down below as well. And so until next time, I want all of you, my little yarnivores and spiderettes, to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.